Greetings, my name is Jake, and I have run the Dragon of Ice by your peak campaign. I'm going to call it a campaign, and that's actually a playthrough that you can find right here on this channel. I did some things that I liked. I did some things that I maybe didn't like and figured I could improve upon. And this has been a pretty popular series. So, um, yeah, I'm making a video about the Logger's Camp quest, which is also a particular quest that my players went on. And um, if you're a player in this adventure and, and you're interested in avoiding spoilers, well, that might be difficult if you continue watching this video, but maybe you just want inside information and then this is also useful for you. I don't know what your process is. I think you can figure that out for yourself. But either way, I did warn you about the spoilers, which means you know I'm a nice guy. So why don't you hit the like button and uh, then we'll get to talking. One of the very first things that we normally do is we read the quest cards because I find it useful for my process to look at an adventure from the player's point of view because it helps just kind of guide the whole process. So let's take a look. Deep in Neverwinter Wood, along the river that flows west toward Neverwinter, is a logging camp. Every two months, Fandolin delivers fresh supplies to the camp, which is run by the half-brother of Fandolin's townmaster, Harbin Wester. Barthen, the local provisioner, has prepared a new delivery. He needs someone to bear the supplies safely to the camp. Return to Harbin Wester with a notice of delivery, signed by his half-brother, Tybor Wester, to claim your reward of 100 gold pieces. So let's set the tone a little bit here in the region of the Sword Coast in the Forgotten, or really, if we're being honest, they are the only remembered realms of the Forgotten Realms. And <laughs> so the mountain of Hotano, Hotanau, Hotano. So I'm going to call them the Poconos. So there was a volcano in the Poconos that erupted and did all sorts of damage to this area. And the city of Neverwinter is actually still recovering. Now, since it is nearby a forest and in order to rebuild a city, you need things like lumber since there's also a river that goes through the forest to the city, there is a business opportunity that is just primed for anyone that is willing to take advantage of it. One logger's camp in particular, it's on the south side of the river, is run, just like the quest card said, by Tybor Wester, which this adventure describes him as a craven opportunist, which I'm not really sure exactly why that's important as far as like mechanics or like specific actions. I think it's more just so you can help get in the mindset of running Tybor Wester. Basically, Tybor cares about Tybor at the end of the day. And the reason why Tybor gets his supplies from Vandalin is because he's able to avoid heavy taxes by going more conventional routes, which I'm assuming is through Neverwinter. I don't think it's all that important unless you really want to dive into it, but Basically, as far as the players know, their supply is going from Vandalin to this camp, and that happens periodically. Maybe your players will be more interested in that part of it than mine were. However, that's why he gets his supplies from Vandalin. Pretty straightforward. So all business aside, the reason why Tybor and this is a quest is because Tybor has drawn attention from the Anchorites of Talos, which are the half-orcs that worship Talos, the evil god of storms, and one of the anchorites has actually found their way into the camp and hidden a totem that has kind of put a curse on the whole thing. And what this curse did is it attracted Ankegs, which are like these giant insectoid creatures. They basically, I don't know if this is accurate, but it feels to me kind of like a cross between like an ant and a lobster, and it's just really big and they spit acid and they burrow under the ground. And uh, they're actually kind of cool creatures, especially at this level, to be able to scare your players with uh, creatures like that. So that's actually kind of cool. Yeah, I think I like the Ankegs here. And in case you haven't guessed, these Ankegs made very short work of the unsuspecting loggers, and uh, the Ankegs had a nice snack. And Tybor, who is extremely brave, not so much, locked himself in his office and is just hoping to wait out the Ankegs or find help, and that's where the players come in. Now, the particular and specific 
both basically mean the same thing. But the goals of this quest is that the players simply deliver the supplies to the camp and then get Tybor's signature, indicating that the supplies were received so that the players can get paid. Now on to preparing for this quest, and it's very straightforward. The players go to Barthen to get the supplies, which will be brought and dragged, drug dragged, pulled by Vincent the Ox. Now in my playthrough, I based Barthen off of Ron Swanson from Parks and Rec, and thus, of course, Vincent is naturally Lil Sebastian and very important to Barthen, and I just leaned into that a little bit. It was fun. I know Josh is a big Parks and Rec fan, and uh, when he kind of put two and two together, it was it was just a fun little moment. I'm not saying you need to do that. All I would say is uh, do something that's familiar for you, and uh, it should be fun, especially if the players, one or more of the players that you have at your table will be uh, kind of connect the dots like that. It'll just, it'll be fun. Definitely use show and not tell. Let them put that together. And if you want more advice on putting together NPCs, we have some silly impressions that we do, plus a lot of tips for putting together very memorable NPCs. And uh, there should be a card that pops up over one of my shoulders. I think it's this one. Yeah, it's this one. One last note on preparing for the adventure. This is going to be a little bit more specific to your campaign because at this point in the adventure, I don't know where your characters are when it comes to rumors they might be aware of. Maybe they've already taken a trip to the Neverwinter Wood for whatever reason. So Falcon and his hunting lodge is kind of like a secondary base of operations. And I think uh, it's a very cool character to be able to even be a secondary quest giver, which worked out that way in our playthrough. And so I think if they haven't heard about Falcon's Hunting Lodge, I think it's very reasonable for Barthen to say, hey, while you're going there, if you want to stop at Falcon's Hunting Lodge, just take a bottle of wine and uh, he's going to treat you really well. And uh, I do think it's important that the players know that there is a, another place of safety that you could have in the Neverwinter Wood. I don't think you need to make that complicated. I think the, the adventure says like, hey, if the players bring it up, I mean, sure, let the players make their own choices, but Barthen also has the motivation of wanting to keep Vincent safe and will probably want your journey to be a safe and uh, successful one. So, yeah, have Barthen tell him about the wine. Why not? Now, traveling to the loggers' camp is not something they really... I don't know. They There, there are mechanics involved in which you make DC-10 survival checks, and I think that's totally fine. They talk about failing and adding time to the trip. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. But I do think you could kind of handle that in any way that you want. Uh, if you're going to have maybe random encounters, you could easily do that. If you want to lean into any of the mystery and secrecy and potential magic of Neverwinter Wood, have fun. I do think... Uh, Sometimes travel can be a little awkward. It depends on the motivations of your, your table. If you have like a more classic, let's hex crawl this, a lot of old school players are going to be really into that, and a lot of new school players are going to be more like, oh, okay, so we're in the woods? Cool. Handle that the best way you see fit. On the way to the camp, though, there is a section labeled a boring encounter. And of course, I love puns, so the way they spelt that was really great. But basically, there's just this like wild boar that the players can notice is watching them. What the players don't know is that this is an anchorite of Talos in boar form. You could say that this anchorite is bored. But this is basically a scout. So if the players don't do anything, this will have the effect that this boar is going to go back and report to the other anchorites that, hey, there's some people coming around this area looks like they're capable they might try to mess things up if they kill the boar perhaps uh this kind of turns into something where like now you're drawing a little more attention now they start sending out search parties like hey what happened to our friend that could kind of go either way and i love the fact that it gives the players some agency and i love when there's consequences to their actions and no matter which way they go with that there's a consequence and the last thing to note about traveling to the loggers camp is that if your players do go to Falcon's hunting lodge, there's a lot of cool opportunities here. Falcon is a hunter. He's a woodsman. He goes around the woods. And so he knows what's going on. 
I think it's perfectly reasonable for him to say, yeah, I've seen some like dark storms heading uh, around, particularly east of the, the hunting lodge. And he knows there's this creepy woodland manse that perhaps he's wondering if there's something crazy going on there. And then maybe if they hit it off, Falcon says, hey, if you go to the loggers camp, I'm going to go investigate a little bit out east. And then when you come back, we can compare notes and we can talk about it. And I think that makes a very natural way for Falcon to actually give the Woodland Man's quest to the players when they return, which is just, I don't know, there's just a nice flow there. And there's a good chance that your players will be ready for that next tier anyways at this point. So yeah, Falcon, he's a way you can give inside information. And uh, I ended up kind of basing him off of Gaston from Beauty and the Beast, but like a nice version of him, if that makes sense. Just like this manly man, man's man man about town he's cultured too which was which was really fun he was a he was a good one daisy really liked falcon you should watch you should watch our playthrough uh now we come to arriving at the loggers camp which is kind of fun i think the box text here is pretty cool i think it allows you to kind of set a tone i like leaning into just like it's eerily quiet perhaps highlighting that as just a, a breeze or two you, especially if it's during the daytime, like I know it might sound creepier to like if they arrive at night, like, ooh, it's just this creepy thing with no movement. And sure, that's creepy. But I think there's something about the daytime with this like abandoned look that almost kind of makes you feel like you want to emotionally drop your guard in some way. And then all of a sudden out from the ground, some monk eggs come after the party and it's really cool. Uh, they have locations where they're starting. However, you can move those around any which way you want. Uh, the only thing of note is that if you're running this for a solo player, to never throw more than one of them at the solo player at the same time. But it would be really cool to let them be able to investigate a little bit and maybe pace it that way. For me, um, I kind of threw them at the party a little bit more quickly, I think, than I probably would if I were to run it again, because I kind of felt like I wanted the encounter to be more uh, challenging from a mechanic standpoint. And I think maybe it's not as much about that in this adventure as it is about just being creepy. And I think that's something that you could lean into. And it's just that unexpected thing like, oh, you're just searching these areas. And all of a sudden, this giant creature just burrows out of the ground and tries to eat you alive. That would ruin anyone's day. The totem that has drawn the Ankegs to this camp is buried in the L2 region. And the interesting thing about that is I feel like this is one of those things that as a dungeon master, when you have layers to your story, it can be very tempting to want to let the players in on everything that has happened. Uh, but the thing is, is if the players search that area specifically, that's when they find the totem. Then they also have to succeed on a religion check. I believe it's DC 15. We're going to see right here if I'm correct. And that's when they would be able to put two and two together. Now, maybe they fail that check and they're like, oh, I'm just going to destroy the totem because it's evil. Or maybe they're like, oh, this looks like a weird doll. Uh, it's kind of all on how you describe it and how they put the pieces together. But no matter how that falls, let them just come to their own conclusions. You are showing, you're not telling unless they succeed on that religion check. And what that does is it lets the story start to make sense whether or not they put the pieces together along the way that these anchorites of Talos are doing nasty things to the forest. Let them come to that conclusion on their own. It's not like they're good players if they figure it out or bad players if they don't. But at the end, it could all start to come together and, and make sense. And you kind of get that aha moment. And if you try and force speed that to your players, you're kind of robbing both them and you of something truly special. And uh, I would advise against that. Section L3 is like the office. And that's the area that Tybor has barricaded himself in to find safety. When the players get there, there is an Ankeg that will burst out of the ground and attack, and you can have that scene unfold any way you want. Uh, I think because it, the adventure does describe him as a craven opportunist, you could have Tybor look at things kind of however you want. Now, it says that he will make whatever self-serving, cowardly decision that, you know, seems to be apparent. I think you could look at that in a number of ways, and if there is a, something that 
maybe Tybor says, this might be literally my only chance to get out of here alive before I starve to death. Perhaps there are scenarios in which Tybor actually joins the fight and you could have some kind of like Malatov cocktail situation or, you know, it's a, it's an office, it's a tool shed area. There could be makeshift weapons that you could give Tybor or perhaps he even just has a weapon that he carries on him. Either way, uh, he could have some kind of a, an odd hero moment if the group is, you know, really struggling against this Ankeg and uh, maybe he comes in and gets a killing blow if uh, if it comes to that. I, I don't know. I tend to not like to have my NPCs get the killing blow if it's possible, but I also don't like to fudge the dice rolls really unless something really is just off in some way, which I had a video about that in which uh, we talk about that. So you should check that out when you have a chance. But either way, this is a very interesting way in which you could set the tone for Tybor for the rest of this adventure, really, and for the whole campaign. So... Give that some thought before you uh, just throw them on the board like that. So my evaluation of this adventure. Again, I think we kind of have something that's sort of straightforward here, kind of like the Butterskull Ranch in ways. Like, I mean, you kind of go to the thing, you kill the bad guys, the monsters, uh, you know, whatever. And I, there's more to it than that with each one. It's not just that. But And then that's basically the quest. Now, the thing that I think is interesting here is that the Neverwinter Wood has this mysterious air about it. There's this, like, darkness in a way, this dark magic sort of thing going on, and you're able to just start to tell that story. And that really is kind of the thing about this adventure. You're kind of, you're doing this one thing, but you're just planting seeds that really will start to make sense a little later on. And if the players do meet Falcon, that's awesome because then they're going to have a chance to go to the Woodland Mance and learn a lot more about things and probably pretty soon. So I don't think you need to overthink this one too much. I mean, if you have something creative you want to do with it, by all means, have fun. It's your table, it's your game, and you know your players better than I do or Wizards of the Coast ever could. So in that case, you know, go with your gut. But if you're just looking for a very simple experience, I think you can pretty much run this out of the book with not many modifications and you'll be in good shape. If you found this video useful, do me a favor and hit the like button because it helps out a lot. And then of course, if you'd like to see me run this particular adventure, we've got that here. And then we have the entire playlist for how to run the Dragon of Ice Spire Peak. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and uh, you have a good adventure in running this game and stuff. Yeah. Take care, everybody.